Good evening, I'm Daniel Gibson. Cardinal George Pell is tonight preparing to go to prison as a convicted child sex offender. Once the Pope's trusted advisor, the 77-year-old was found guilty of abusing two boys, but is continuing to protest his innocence. Now, he was convicted two months ago, and our nation's media was banned from reporting what happened until now. Cardinal George Pell, former Archbishop of Melbourne, of Sydney, the Vatican's treasurer, third highest ranked Catholic in the world, guilty of sex crimes against two 13-year-old boys. Chris Reason, 7 News. We've been prevented from covering this case for months and to tell us why, we're joined by reporter Mike, Mike Amor in Melbourne. Mike, how unusual was this suppression order? Daniel, it was unusual because the rest of the world was talking about this conviction, reporting on it. It was only the Australian media that was subject to this gag order, under the threat of a prison term, by the way. For now, the presiding judge says only a jail sentence will be a fitting punishment for Cardinal Pell's crimes. OK, thanks, Mike. Well, sexual abuse survivors have slammed the Cardinal and those who protected him for so long. George Pell has gone from a man of unimaginable power within one of the world's oldest institutions to a convicted sexual predator. He now faces the possibility of dying in prison. For George Pell, it must have seemed like walking into hell. Robert Ovadia, 7 News. The Vatican knew this news was going to break eventually and European correspondent Hugh Whitfeld is there for us tonight. Hugh, will uh, the Pope defrock Cardinal Pell? Dan, the unofficial name for a priest or cardinal forced from the Catholic Church is the death penalty. Just one cardinal has been defrocked or expelled from the priesthood and it happened this month. We should have a statement from the Vatican fairly shortly. Dan. OK, thanks you. We'll have the rest of the today's news, including the tragic end of the search of two missing brothers. Also, why did he do it? The man's dangerous decision to set fire to fuel and standing by her man, Dylan Walker appears in court hand in hand with the partner he's accused of assaulting. Two little boys aged three and five have died after going missing in the Queensland city of Townsville last night. Hundreds of locals joined police in the search for the young brothers their bodies were discovered early this morning in the Ross River. Drowning has no barriers and uh, it's just a dreadful, sad accident. Their mother thanked everyone who helped search for her boys. A baby boy has suffered critical injuries after being struck by a car's airbag set off during a minor crash. There's now questions about why the 11-month-old had been sitting on his father's lap in the driver's seat. And a warning, some people might find the pictures in this story distressing. In the delicate hands of paramedics, the tiny body of Zachariah Watford. Andrew Denny, 7 News. A service station worker has confronted a man who was trying to set fire to petrol bouncers. Security cameras captured the bizarre arson attempt. On his knees, armed with a petrol pump. But the situation only gets more bizarre and dangerous. He had a lighter on him. And I, I yelled to him, like, why are you doing this? And he said, they're calling ambulance, otherwise I'll light it up. Construction of the billion-dollar Snowy Hydro expansion is finally set to begin. Prime Minister Scott Morrison says it'll power an extra half a million homes and drag down energy prices. On a picture-perfect day, Scott Morrison makes a flying visit to commit $1.4 billion to get Snowy 2.0 off the ground. Checking finance and there was a sea of red on the Aussie share market today with losses right across the board. Almost all sectors closed lower with tech shares dropping almost 3%. One Aussie dollar, that'll buy 71.56 US cents. North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un has arrived in Vietnam for his second summit with Donald Trump. He stepped off his armoured train before being driven into Hanoi in a heavily secured convoy. The pair will meet tomorrow, eight months after their historic talks in Singapore. NRL star Dylan Walker has appeared in court accused of attacking his partner. The details next in Prime 7 News. And Shark star Josh Dugan opens up about his mental health battle.
It's been revealed an argument over a PlayStation was the trigger behind the domestic violence allegations surrounding NRL player Dylan Walker. He's facing charges of assaulting his fiance, who was holding a baby at the time and who later made a triple zero call. It was clear Dylan Walker and fiance Alexandra Ivkovic have agreed to move forward, arriving together for today's hearing. The NRL, Dragons, Power Brokers, Players Association, they've all been locked in crisis talks this afternoon over the future of accused rapist Jack DeBellin. Meanwhile, Josh Dugan's revealed he admitted himself to a rehab clinic in Thailand in the off-season after struggling with mental health issues. The Shark star is encouraging anyone who needs uh, to uh, get some help to do that and speak up. Living life in the spotlight has never sat comfortably with Josh Dugan. Ups and downs of footy life and, um, you know, I, I suppose I was taking that home with me and, and then everything else was sort of falling apart as well. We'll recap today's massive developments relating to Cardinal George Powell. We'll do that next in Prime 7 News. We'll also have the latest weather and thanks to uh, Andrew for sending in tonight's photo. Alley's away, so let's get a quick check of the national weather for you now. Satellite picture basically shows some south-easterly winds further up in the New South Wales area. Inland, it's still very warm, but what is happening is it's a period of stability. What you had today, you're getting in tomorrow, you're getting in the next day. It is consistent, if nothing else. Still very warm in Condo today, 33 degrees. More Reef for 30 and Tamworth, 30 degrees. As I mentioned, that period of stability is staying with us and, as well, sounding like a broken record, it's... More of the same. No real rain to speak of. Temperatures tomorrow, 33 for Moree. Dubbo heading for 33 after a 17 overnight. Uh, 26 is at Coffs, 29 is at Grafton and still quite warm in Lismore. There is the chance of an isolated shower. It's about 50-50, but the chance of showers does increase as the week goes along the coast. Partly cloudy in Sydney tomorrow at a top of 27. That's the latest weather and indeed your news for this Tuesday, the 26th of February. The day it was revealed that the highest ranking Catholic in Australia has been found guilty of five counts of child sexual abuse. An unprecedented nationwide suppression order was lifted, allowing the media to report the horrific details for the first time. A sentencing date for Cardinal George Pell will be revealed tomorrow. His lawyer has lodged an appeal. The verdict is sending shockwaves through the Catholic Church. And Michael Usher will bring you the very latest for the, uh, the very special time tonight of 10.15pm. Thanks again for your company. I'm Daniel Gibson. Until I see you again, have a great night. Bye for now.